Fine. You know what? Fine. Okay, fine. You keep asking about it. Drew, all you keep saying in all your videos is Apple ecosystem. Probably one of the most common phrases spoken on this channel. Here's why that's important to me. So yeah, a lot of people have noticed that whenever I'm reviewing, whether it's an iPhone, a MacBook, or an Apple Watch, I constantly like to bring up the ecosystem, the fact that Apple products work together, but with continuity, with an airdrop and optimization, overall, there are pro apps specifically for the MacBooks that make them worth it, like Final Cut Pro, and there's specific features about the iPhone, whether it be the 4K at 60, or the iMessage, or the optimization of iOS with its far, far, far ahead processors that we have yet to see how they will hold up against the Snapdragon 845, we don't know yet. But then of course, to a lot of people, that means nothing. It's like, Drew, I'm looking in the market for a watch or I'm looking in the market for a phone. I don't need to buy into an entire ecosystem. Why do you let that consume so much of your opinion? First of all, bias. Keep in mind, I don't try to hide that. I'm not trying to convince you that I'm an unbiased tech channel. That would be a complete lie. Just look behind me. That answers all your questions. But second of all, the primary reason I've noticed after trying lots of different types of phones, a lot of people who are new to the channel or maybe don't watch every single video don't realize that I do not only buy Apple products and I never touch anything that's not Apple. It's simply not true. I've brought up many times before that I use Windows 10, whether it be on my MacBook or the gaming PC in the Talos of Gaming Room, pretty much every single day. There's a couple days when I'm busy and I don't have time to get on that thing. But for the most part, I'm still using Microsoft software every day. I've tried Android phones and keep that in mind many times. In fact, I believe the first phone I tried was the Blue Vivo 5, followed by the Nexus 6P. Then I think it was the Note 7, then the Google Pixel, then the Galaxy S8, then the Essential Phone. I've actually owned more Android phones than iPhones, which is a weird fact that a lot of people don't even think about. I've tried the Surface Pro. I even still have this super embarrassing Windows phone that one of you guys sent me. I, I thought about reviewing it, but man, would that, would that be a great April 1st video? The new best smartphone of all time. Thumbnail right there. But regardless, keep in mind that it's not just me being arrogant towards the competition. I think it's fair to say that the reason I'm so biased on this channel is because I admit that every Everyone is biased. Even people who claim and who try their best to be unbiased, they grew up with something. They were initially introduced to technology in a certain way. There's not one person who had an equal opportunity where all technology was presented to them at once and they let none of their personal life or none of how they use technology in their daily life affect their decision of which phone they use. Everyone's biased. That's my point. If you recall my collaboration with MKBHD, even he admits that he is not an unbiased tech reviewer. A lot of people put that name on him, but he admits itself, he is not unbiased. I am all with you on being openly biased. So I, <laughs> I kind of get pushed in. I think there is a little bit of pressure when you develop a bigger audience to, to not yeah. be as extreme. If you want to come off, like I'm trying to come off somewhat professional and trustworthy. So when you go way you extreme one way or another, it kind of gets weird. So there's a little bit of a pressure to not lash out too much. But mm -hmm. um, I kind of have been I've been described as an unbiased, no, not my own words, I've been described as unbiased and like shoved into this unbiased box that I disagree with. I want to be consistent in, in my perspective, but that does not mean yeah. unbiased. So I'll talk about things that I like, I'll talk about things I don't like. And the thing about that is when you keep it consistent, where I might say, you know what, you know I like red and black. You might know I don't like, I don't like green, for example. If a green phone comes out and I say I don't like it, it's not, you know, I'm not like some unbiased person saying it is green, it is not red and black. I'm saying I don't like it, and I don't like it because it's yeah. green. And he even mentioned in our collaboration video that that is okay. So a lot of what I'm talking about today is personal preference, of course, and I want to try to explain why ecosystem, that is how products work well with each other and form a great network to be strong, is better than just a one-on-one -on -one fight between two smartphones. A lot of people would like to bring up things like the OnePlus 5T or Galaxy S8 versus iPhone, and say, well, look, this has this, this, and this features. Since the iPhone doesn't, therefore, it is an inferior product. And to a lot of people, that makes complete sense. If you're not looking at the software and you're not looking at how the phone interacts with other devices, then yeah, I mean, I can't argue with you that Galaxy S8 has more RAM than the iPhone. There's no denying that. If you really, really care passionately about the headphone jack, Galaxy phones still have that at this time. But the reason I like bringing up the Apple ecosystem so much is, for one, it's very hard to have a counter argument with that. The collection of Apple products 
robotics working together is unparalleled by the competition. Yes, Samsung has an ecosystem. Yes, Google has an ecosystem, but it doesn't go as wide. They both have strengths in different ways. Like I think the Samsung market has really, really nailed smartphones. They make beautiful phones. They're leading the industry in terms of new display technology and how they look and they're able to stuff a lot of features in a really good piece of hardware. But I don't feel like Samsung has really conquered the tablet or laptop or pro market industry. They make some desktops and laptops in two in ones, but they definitely are not brought up when we're talking about best tablet. Usually people are debating iPad versus Surface. I think Google has really, really got the services down as in Google Drive, Google Photos, their suite of apps that they let anyone use, including Apple users for free. They've really got that down. But as you guys know about my opinions on their Pixel lineup, I think they're incredibly lacking, even behind the iPhones and yet running Android. And something they do get right though is the smart speaker market by making a really, really cheap one that is pretty easy to understand while also making best smart speaker on the market that is really loud, sounds really clear, and definitely blows away the competition at this point. Whereas when I look at Apple, yes, a lot of the hardware is not necessarily the best in its class, but the fact that it works with so many other devices that support it is what makes it worth it to me. As in like when I open my MacBook Pro, the Apple Watch unlocks it. Because of Apple's software optimization, I can record 4K at 60 on my phone and then wirelessly send it to my laptop. I can hand off Safari or Notes all the time with continuity. I can iMessage people on any device and SMS text people on any device, whether it be the watch, phone, tablet, or Mac. The reason I bring that up so much is because I have to admit, when we're just comparing individual products on their own, if I didn't bring up the networking of devices that it was compatible with, I personally think it gets kind of boring. If I try to not mention Apple Watch or AirPods or Macs or iPads or anything like that, and we just compare, you know, iPhone 10 versus Galaxy Note 8. Some of them have certain advantages. Some people want a headphone jack, some people don't. Some people prefer the way iOS works or some people prefer Android. But at the end of the day, both of them really do the same thing. I know you guys hate to hear tech YouTubers do that because they go, you can't plug in headphones on the iPhone 10. Does the iPhone have a stylus? No, it doesn't. But again, there's a reason the iPhone 10 is selling super well. Apple is doing something right. What kind of things are we doing on our phones all the time though, really? Are we constantly shooting 4K at 60? Are we constantly enjoying our phone because yes, it has a stylus built into it. Thank God this makes it the best phone on the market. Again, some people might appreciate that. Some people might not. But at the end of the day, so many people are just browsing social media, taking pictures, listening to music on their phone, whether it be wired or wireless. Too much of just these products by themselves are so similar that trying to not bring up what they're compatible with to me becomes boring. Because if someone just says, I prefer the stylus, and since the iPhone 10 does not have a stylus built into it, I'm not interested. There's not much to debate there. That argument's closed very quickly. Whereas when we can start looking at what possibilities each individual smartphone opens up, I think the debate starts to get a little bit more interesting. We can see how well the iPhone works with its other Apple designed inside and out counterparts. And as someone who benefits from having this Apple ecosystem on a daily basis, yeah, it's very hard for me to not bring that up. And I also think it makes for a more interesting video. I think that if I was not biased and if I did not try to bring up the ecosystem, whether it be Apple Watch, AirPods or iPad or Mac, if I never tried to bring that up, I think I would just sound like every other tech YouTuber out there. On Talos of Tech, I'm hoping to interest you with something different. And because I know there are a ton of Apple fans out there, you guys deserve to know what an Apple fan thinks about non-Apple things as well as Apple things. Even the Apple sheep kind of have their own debates within Apple of what things they think they should or shouldn't do. Like I'm totally for removing the headphone jack on all devices, but as we've seen in the comments before, there's a lot of Apple fans out there who don't want to see that happen to their precious MacBooks. We have those little debates there, but for the most part, I think reviewing non-Apple devices would be incredibly boring if I did not bring up the counterpart ecosystem because we could just say Galaxy has a larger display. So I guess it wins. Interesting. You guys can figure that out on yourselves. You don't need me to read technical specifications to you. That's what websites are for. There's just a little spreadsheet with numbers on it. I don't want to just repeat that to you. I want to provide an opinion so that I can hear yours. In a way, what I'm trying to do here is show that I am biased towards something because I have a personal preference. It's not necessarily because I'm arrogant about it. It's just I have tried the competition. I have not enjoyed it and I have found something that I really enjoy. So I'm going to stick with it. I have an opinion on that thing and I'm going to stick by it. In a similar way, if you don't agree with me, if you hate Apple or if you want to be more of a diverse ecosystem or you don't want an ecosystem at all, I believe you should have the right to that opinion. We should not require all of our viewers. We should not require all of our audiences to not have a bias towards something. We all live different lives. We were all raised differently. We all have different needs from our technology. That means that our opinions are going to change too. Look on the road. How many times do you see the exact identical car model? Twice 
twice or even three times in a row. Everyone prefers different things. Sometimes I see that really ugly yellow Chevy looking truck driving down the road and I'm like, I don't understand someone who would buy that. I think we can apply that same method to technology discussions. We disagree on things, but tell me why so I can understand it better. I hope you now understand why I bring up the ecosystem because it benefits me. And if you're coming to Talos of Tech, if you're subscribing to me, you're getting bias content. Should put that on the cover of the channel. I thought big time Apple sheep would explain it for people, but I still get comments saying you're so biased. It's like, well, yeah, we all are. I, of course, am very, very curious to hear your guys' thoughts on this matter in the comments below. This is your Apple sheep here, and I will see you in the next one.